I'm going to make some uh, New Glarus uh, Brewing Company from Wisconsin. Uh, New Glarus Spotted Cow. Um, a couple of people, friends and family, um, have commented on how much they like this stuff. So I went and found a recipe that's hopefully going to be close to it. So um, what it is, I'm going to make a five-gallon batch. Uh, you know, start off in this. I'm heating up some water to 64 degrees um, Celsius. And I'm getting close. You can kind of see on the left there, it's at 63-ish. Um, so what this, this uh, it's an American cream ale. That's the style. So in here, I've got six pounds of uh, two-row barley, which is the, the standard base malt for most all-grain um, beers. Um, with that, there's a pound of what we call biscuit or victory malt. It's just a, like a toasted barley. Um, adds some, some, some flavor. Um, there's about, I think, eight ounces, half a pound of... Um, of uh, carapils, which is like a like a sweet um, sort of a um, uh, an, a, an ingredient uh, that'll just sort of um, darken up and sweeten up the beer a little bit. Um, and then there are some non barley adjuncts. There's um, a pound and a half of corn. This is corn meal. You're supposed to use flaked corn, but the homebrew shop just didn't have it, which shouldn't make a difference at all. Um, what this does, it adds um, uh, alcohol to the the beer, but it doesn't really add much in terms of flavor, right? Um, and then in here as well, there is flaked. Uh, oats, okay, so oatmeal basically, and what that'll do is add uh, some head, some protein. I think new, I've never had New Glarus um, spotted cow, but I guess what um, uh, it has a haze in it, so that means there's protein suspended in it, and that's coming from the uh, the flaked oats. So what I'm going to do is um, I've got uh, 12 liters of water heating to 64 Celsius. I'll put some of that in that that bucket over here. It's called a mash tun, um, and I'll put the barley in there. Um, with the with the corn adjuncts, and I'll let it sit for about an hour. And what that'll do is there there are enzymes inside um, the barley which are triggered at certain temperature points. So, um, and and when those enzymes come to life, what they do is they um, they start to break down the starch, the stored starch. Um, which is energy for the for the grains uh, when they when they sprout. Um, it is energy uh, starch stored as energy that will can be converted to sugar when the enzymes are present. The enzymes are triggered into life at a certain temperature, so that's why you take the the water, heat it to a precise temperature, mix it with the the grains, um, and get the mixed um, ingredients up to a certain temperature. Trigger the enzymes. Um, do that in here, and then about an hour later, um, instead of having uh, like a starchy soup, we're going to have a nice sweet. Um, uh, liquid that we can then throw um, lead yeast into to ferment into uh, nuclear spotted cow. Okay. All right, so uh, this has been mashing now. It's called a mash when you combine the hot water with the uh, uh, the grains. Uh, mashing for about an hour, and what I've done is um, I uh, halted the, the starch conversion by the enzymes by um, getting a, a, a bunch of water up to a couple hundred degrees Fahrenheit, putting it in here, and what that does, it basically just denatures the um, uh, the, the, the brew, I guess, and stops the um, the uh, enzymes from doing their job. So what I'm going to do now, let that sit for about 10 minutes, um, and then what I'll start to do is take the water that I've heated to 168 Fahrenheit in there, and I'm going to put it in there. Um, uh, quart by quart, and then trickle that back out through this tube using that valve back into the empty pot, okay? And then I'll boil it, and then that'll turn into the beer. Okay, so everyone does this a little differently, but, um, you know, and find what works. So up there, that's the, uh, the mash, uh, which is the hot water with the, the grains, and that's emptying into the, my brew kettle, real slow trickle, as you can see. It should be about an hour that you take this, uh, take the hour it takes to empty this into the into the brew pot, and then um, and, and you heat this at the same time. Um, uh, and then by the time the this is called the sparge, right? The way you sparge water sparging going through you know the, the grains and making making the uh, it's called the wort, um, W O R T. Um, it should take about an hour. So by the time the uh, the the wort is run through uh, the the hose into the brew pot, then, then it's heated up to boiling, and what I'll do is take this outside and put it on my, um, uh, my propane tank, propane burner, and then boil that up with the hops, um, and then chill it, and then put in the, the yeast. So uh, while this is going on, I've got my yeast over here. I, I took this out of a, an older, well not older, but another batch that I just uh, kicked up, and what I did, I took the, uh, the, the, the sediment off the bottom, which includes yeast, um, and spent yeast cells, active yeast and spent or dead yeast cells. Um, mix that with some boiled water and it separates into three layers, you can see it. The layer down here is, that's all dead spent yeast cells. What, on the top was the water I used just to mix up all the, 
um, the sediment, and then the middle layer, that's all active yeast cells. So uh, I'm getting these to uh, room temperature, and then um, after all this is chilled and uh, uh, ready to go, I'll pitch that yeast in there. So after I'm done with all my grains, um, I compost them, right? So that'll uh, that'll turn into real nice stuff, I think. It's all more, it's a lot of cellulose, I think, but it's all been nicely broken up by the heat. And uh, put it back in to the ground. Um, okay, so I finished the sparge. I just brought my brew kettle outside. I've got a little propane tank with it. It's a turkey deep fryer base, but you know, it works just fine. So, what I'll do is um, I'll wait till this goes to the boil. I'll throw those in. Those are hops. It's three quarters of an ounce of Mount Hood, um, which is uh, just a, a nice um, bittering hop, not too strong. It's exactly what um, they want in this uh, recipe. And then I'll uh, boil that for 45 minutes. I'll put another batch of this in just to give it a, an aroma uh, as opposed to just the taste. And then uh, I'll chill it down. I'll show that. That's an interesting video. Nice day to brew um, outside. The weather's finally turned a corner here at our place. So yeah, kind of you know, still cloudy, but a little bit of a nice blue sky up there. So anyways, be back in a sec. Okay, there are the hops pitched, and I'll give those a little bit of a stir, but you can see them uh, now just, just sitting there nicely. Um, after the beer is brewed, uh, after about an hour, or boiled for an hour, um, that, that coil there, it's, it's real straightforward. It's, it's like a radiator. It's a, it's, a tr it's a heat transfer. So what happens is I'll hook my garden hose up to that um, and put cold water through the coil, and then that coil, of course, gets dropped in there and then the hot water comes out of the left and then just pours down into the drain, okay? Alright, it's exactly one hour since we started and uh, what I did, I put um, my, my different uh, utensils in, the, in the, um, the brew pot just to sterilize or sanitize them, sterilize them. Um, so you can see my uh, 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 chiller is in there and the pink thing is a, is a wort strainer so what I'll do is put that in the top of my fermenter and when I pour the, 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 the contents of here of the brew pot it's full of hops right so the strainer will catch the hops okay so I've got the uh, hose attached to the wort chiller which is in there and uh, the hot water is running off so what I'm gonna do is fill this up that looks totally gross it really is it's old um, honeycomb wax that I'm going to fill up with water in this pot and I'm going to boil it. And what it'll, it'll just boil all the crap out of the, uh, the wax and leave the wax sitting floating on the top. And then I'll, uh, I'll pull that off and then reuse it in my hive. Okay? I'll put that on the uh, fryer. All right, so that chiller, it took only maybe 10 minutes, 12 minutes. So what I'll do is um, pop it out. Let me just pop it out here. And I'll hose that off a little later. And then I'll just pour that beer into this, take the top off. This is all sanitized and everything, by the way, so, um, you know, there's no chance of, well, there's always a chance of bacteria and whatnot getting in, but uh, highly unlikely. Put that down. There's my bee comb stuff. Getting hot. Okay, here we go. All right, so there I've, I've poured it uh, from the brew pot into the pail. And what that does is it, um, the two, two things, um, the hops get strained out. That's very good. And then also the beer... Um, gets aerated. Uh, yeast to work needs oxygen, so if I'll pour this back and forth a few times, um, oxygenated, aerated very, very nicely, and the yeast will get, um, uh, will be that much uh, better for it. Another thing I, I just pointed out, I want to point out before, I'm doing a, a gravity reading, basically how, how much sugar has been added into this water. So I'm not going to do a close-up, you can't, but basically the, uh, the gravity reading reads uh, 1050, 1.5, so basically we'll have about a 4.5, 4 4.8% uh, alcohol um, uh, drink. Um, I showed the yeast before, and I'm just going to um, stick my sanitized turkey baster in there, and uh, just pitch that in, like this. Okay, so I'll do this, there's about a cup of... Uh, uh, yeast in there, and I'll get all that out, and uh, this will be ready to go. This will be bubbling by the morning. Okay, there we go. So um, the lid is on. The little thing uh, sticking up—that's a fermentation lock. 
Um, what that does is uh, it, if it allows the CO2 from inside the fermenter to come up and it passes through a water um, seal, I guess, and then out. And then nothing from outside can get in. So it's a protected environment. All right, so we'll see how this goes. And I'll look over here. Here's my, uh, here's my wax. So it's <laughs> just boiling away. I'm going to, let me just stir that. Let's see how hot this is. That's really gross, but what I'll do is uh, strain it, and then I'll have um, uh, nothing but pure beeswax uh, sitting on the top of the uh, of that pot. Okay, pretty neat. Okay. Okay, so I strained all that, um, and you'll see the, the, the wax will come in and float on the top and then turn into a nice cake. And if you can see the yellow um, ring around the top. That's just where the wax has cooled down already. So this is nice and hot water with wax. So um, in the morning, I'm sure it'll all have a nice cake of wax. I'll just pop it off and, and uh, maybe clean it one more time like this and uh, be ready to go.